Hello, in this modern OpenGL tutorial, we're going to be looking at spotlights. We've looked at directional lights, we've looked at point lights, directional lights. They have a direction, but they don't have an origin, a position, so they are infinitely far away. Point light has a position, but it shines light in every single direction. Whereas a spotlight has a position and a direction. It's, I found this image on Google, it's a fantastic image. So the position will be over here somewhere, and this will be the direction. It essentially creates a cone-like effect, sort of what a lamp would do, or a torch would do. It would, as you can see, the spotlights are used in stage plays as well, stages where there's music concerts and that sort of stuff. But spotlights are used in, well, several scenarios in games throughout your world. So without further ado, let's get on with the coding. The coding is actually very, very simple. We only need to actually modify the lighting fragment shader in terms of the shaders. Everything else is A-OK. -okay. The material, we can leave it because it's got diffuse, specular, and shininess. But with the light, we need the direction because remember, Spotlight has an original position and then a direction in which it is shining. You, we're going to have an ambient, we're going to have a diffuse, and we're going to have a specular. We're going to be having the constant, the linear, and the quadratic. But we also need a couple of float variables. The first one is cut off, not poof, cut off. And I'm actually, no, let me just close this so, it's, so we've got more screen real estate. The next one is float outer cut off. I would recommend when setting these values from the main.cpp, which we'll be doing in a few minutes, change the values, modify them. This essentially will allow you to change how big you want your sort of cone to be, your area of shine to be, because it could just be this big, it could be this big, or it could be even bigger. So in terms of the output, we've got color, fragment, position, normal, text coordinates, all of this is staying the same. The ambient calculation, the diffuse calculation, the specular calculation, that isn't changing. Even the attenuation isn't going to change. All we actually need to do is add a extra section for the spotlight, which is going to be calculating soft edges. So we're going to do float theta equals dot. It's very similar to what we've done before. It's not very new. You should be able to see what is going on. We need the light direction, which is from here, like so. Again, we're using the same method that we use for the diffuse in the previous video. So if you don't have that, feel free to check out that video or source code. There will be a link in the description. So light direction. This needs to be normalized. So normalize. And then finally in here, you need to put negative light Dot direction is put this because again you're not you're doing it from the perspective of the camera not from the user that's the reason the position is negated that's the simple reason why now we need a float epsilon equals two you just need to calculate the difference between the cutoff and the outer cutoff so light dot cut off minus not equals damn it minus light dot outer cut off now float intensity equals clamp and in here first thing we want to do is theta minus light dot outer cut off and we want to divide this calculation by f Epsilon and just provide two values 0, 0.0 and 1.0. As always, verify, I mean, change the values and just compare and contrast, see what is happening. Let me just add a comment for the spotlight. And now, the fi finally, we just need to add the intensity into the diffuse and specular. So, diffuse. Times equals intensity specular times equals, I think you got it, intensity. 
So we're actually done with the shaders or the shader. If we go to the main.cpp, if you scroll down, you may have noticed what I have done is instead of zooming in now, I've just enlarged the font size for Xcode. Let me know if you prefer this because I think this is better simply because when zooming in, you the quality does degrade, whereas this way you still retain high quality, but you still have a large text so it's easy to see on a mobile device again let me know because if you don't it will be hard for me to improve it for the next time we don't need the lamp shader because we're going to be doing it via a spotlight and the reason we don't need any sort of lamp shader or anything like that what we're going to do is attach the spotlight to essentially almost like the camera you can almost think of it like you know you get those helmets with the light on top sometimes people use it for rock climbing builders use it that sort of stuff same thing going to simulate that because stuff like directional light and point lights they're great and if you have them static they're easy to see and understand what's going on but with the spotlight it really does help if you can move it and the best way to move it is move it with the camera aka you so if we keep scrolling down the key position we're still going to essentially be doing all of this bad boy stuff oh but what we're going to do is comment out this light vertex array object after we commented that that out we can go directly into the while loop and we need to change a few things in the while loop when we go to the lighting shader dot use we need to change some of this so for the lighting position location we've done lighting shader dot program light dot position that's fine, that is fantastic. We're not gonna change that at all. But what we're gonna do is add GL int light spot direction location equals GL get uniform location. What the hell happened there with the two underscores? I'm not G out either of you, god damn it. And in here, we need to do lighting shade no <laughs> shader dot program. What I've also done is added or enabled code folding instead of me having to scroll left and right to show you all the text. It just goes down to new line. Again, let me know if you prefer it or you hate it so I can improve it for future videos. So for this, you just specify like direction or whatever you've called it in oh, see that in the shader file and I have moaning because the GL has a capital L and you know what I'm just gonna copy and paste this it's gonna be a lot faster and this is going to be the light spot cutoff location so light spot cut off location so GL get uniform Location. The only thing we need to change with this is light dot. Oh shit. Cut off. And again, copy and paste this because we're gonna essentially do the same, but we're gonna do the outer cutoff location now. So outer. This is very simple stuff. Is we've essentially done all of this before, and we're just adding the extra uniform location based on what we've added to our shader. If you want more information, feel free to go to learnopengl.com, open.gl, there'll be links in the description. These tutorials are actually based on those links, so feel free to check them out, watch the videos, check them out for more in-depth information. They've got great images to accompany the text, really great reading. So for the spot outer cutoff location, we need to change this to outer, cut off and now we need the view position location which I believe we've already got and what I'll, go, I'll actually get rid of this because it's getting in the way and we don't need it we'll also get rid of this and for the light position location we don't actually want to do this at all we want to do camera.getPosition x y and z because again we're attaching it to the camera so if we just copy and paste this and now we need to do the spot direction location this is very similar to this so if we just copy and paste this here the only thing we need to change instead of getting the position we need to set the direction and for this it's going to be get 
it's meant to be get front I don't think we've implemented that. I think it's still a private variable so if I scroll down the variable go down here there's front ah, I haven't done get front so I'll need to do a simple method for GLM colon colon vec free get front return this front okay okay so if I go back to the main cpp and if I change this to get front now just copy and paste this here and finally here so now we need the spot cutoff location oh damn it what the hell have I done no 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 if I just copy that copy and paste this like so so instead of light spot direction location we want the light cut off location cut off location and this is going to be a calculation so what we're going to do is glm colon colon cosine open close bracket and inside of here what we're going to do is do glm colon colon radians and for the radians we're going to do 12.5 f again experiment with the cutoff and the outer cutoff location to see what happens am i missing something this is moment it's a light cut off location what am i missing what the hell am i missing okay let's have a look what it's actually saying too few arguments too few arguments so we've got light spot cutoff location okay that is meant to be uniform 1f remember it's a float value and not a vector free so for this we're going to change it to light spot outer cutoff location and for this you generally just want a bigger value so i'm going to change it to 17.5f again modify these values experiment and see how they affect your scene so in terms of the uniform i think we're pretty much all done we just need we, we just need to set the lights properties now again they are uniform location but pretty low different to this we've already done a lot of it down here so we've done the ambient so good i'm actually going to modify these slightly 0.1f 0.1f and 0.1f i'm actually going to close this and for the diffuse, should I leave this the same? I'm gonna change this to 0.8F. Again, experiment with this, see how these affect the light in the scene. And that's the only way you're gonna get the effect that you want in your game. I'm gonna leave specular. For the constant, I'm gonna leave that. For the linear, I'm gonna leave it. For the quadratic, we're not gonna change it. For the shininess as well, yeah, I'm gonna change that. The only one thing I'm gonna change in here now, Got to comment out this lamp shader because we commented out the declaration and initialization. I need to do the same here. I think we're all ready to run this now. So if I click run, hopefully build successfully. Don't get got no errors. Hopefully it runs now. Okay, one or more test shaders not successfully compiled. Okay, dokie. You can ignore the top part that's just been happening since I reinstalled Xcode. But line 56, 57, and 58. Use of what do you mean? Use of undeclared identifying intensities right here. Unless I spelt it incorrectly. No, I didn't. Okay, so I'm going to have to verify this code again. Something seems to have gone wrong. So float intensity equals clamp theta negative light dot outer cutoff. Ah. 
this should be a capital O because if you go up it is capital O so now let's try running it see if that has <laughs> oh my god it's, it's always something crazy like that so as you can see we've got some light again it's attached to us so if I move forward as you can see we've got sort of a spotlight effect and it's more profound the closer we get to it because otherwise it's very wide because the objects are further away hence they're smaller and as we look around we get this sort of spotlight effect and as you can see it affects objects that are further away slightly differently and we have this really cool spotlight let's try and do it on a corner this corner right here we've got this really cool spotlight that is attached to our head you could, you could go ahead and create some sort of building game or some sort of you know miners game where you have a light on your head that would be pretty cool so that's it for spotlights if you have any questions feel free to post them on our education platform sonarlearning.co.uk there'll be a link in the description plus there will be a link in the description to those two websites learnopengl.com open.gl and the source code will be in the description as well a link will be so you can check out the source code from every single video in this series if you like the video please give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment and as usual thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day